Right, welcome back everybody. South African trade union federations have called on workers across the country to participate in today's united action of pickets and demonstrations around the country. The Congress of South African Trade Unions, that's COSATU, the South African Federation of Trade Unions, SAFDU, the Federation of Unions of South Africa, FEDUSA, and the National Council of Trade Unions, NACTU, have called on workers to join the one-day strike. Workers have been asked to register their dissatisfaction with the country's socio-economic status by either joining the national strike in their regions or to stay away from work in support of the cause. Unions say today's strike is to push back against blatant theft, corruption, job losses, inequality and poverty, among other reasons. Matthew Parks, Kasatu's parliamentary coordinator, joins us now to discuss this. Matthew, thanks for your time and for being with us. Good morning. Thanks, Leanne. I must say there's a historical significance of this particular strike, mostly because we actually haven't seen such a united call from the country's four trade union federations. Um, was there quite a lot of behind-the-scenes discussion to set this moment up? Yes, I mean, look, a uh, strike is always a part of last call for workers. It's not an easy thing to go to. Um, it comes after exhausting negotiating processes. We had raised these issues as COSATU and NEDLAC with government employers, but on the frustration of workers about the collapse of public transport, the collapse of metro rail, the lack of health and safety conditions for workers to work in. We received fantastic support, Leanne, from our sister federations, FEDUSA, NACTU, at NEDLAC, but even from SAFTU. Uh, we've received very positive support from the Council of Churches, from many progressive organizations like the Ahmed Katrada Foundation. And really the reception from workers, from our members, from unions across the country has been overwhelming. Workers are simply sick and tired of being abused. They're tired of the corruption. They're tired of the collapse of metro rail. They're tired of government and employers refusing to pay them the wages, retrenching them. So it really is a protest today by workers across the country to say they are tired. They want government, they want employees to listen to the demands, to respond to them and to deal with the issues. But they cannot simply accept this any longer. You know, obviously, there, this, this strike and you, you, you are wanting a commitment from government on something, on many, many issues. Obviously, corruption being the top of them, you've outlined a couple of them. But talk to us about this commitment that you want from government, looking particularly where we are at economically. Sure, look, government has to get its act together. We are witnessing in the last few years, in the last decade, literally the collapse of government because of state capture and corruption. We feel government has honestly been far too soft on the issues of corruption. Politicians are putting their own bank balance ahead of the needs of the workers of the country. They're more concerned about feathering their nests and those of their wives and their children than taking care of workers across this nation. So it's a message to, to government to get its act together before it's too late. We support the efforts by the president, but we really think we need to start seeing politicians being thrown into prison and the stolen assets returned to the public where it belongs. We simply cannot afford for workers to continue to pay the price of corruption. We've seen what it has done to ESCOM, what it has done to SAA, what it has even done to SABC, many other state-owned enterprises. And that's having a huge impact because now public servants are being denied, being robbed of the small little inflation increases because politicians and business people have stolen so much from the state there's very little money left to go around. So really, government has to get its act together. But equally, Leanne, our greatest crisis besides COVID-19 and corruption is unemployment. You saw in the stats last week that we have now pushed past 50% unemployment rate. 2.2 million workers lost their jobs in the last quarter. Business has to come to the party. The banks, the investment funds need to show a patriotic commitment to creating jobs. We cannot simply continue to throw workers under the bus every single week and retrench thousands of workers. Um, those are mothers and fathers who need to take care of the children. And it's time we show solidarity as a nation to each other to get us out of this crisis. Obviously, there's been uh, support for your call, but there's also been some criticism leveled at what is about to happen today. And this particularly comes from you know, the, the side of economists and those that do look at the economy and the state that the economy is in. You have alluded to it and that the corruption has been one of the biggest factors in all of this. However, do you not feel that the economy that is already basically I don't know, it's waning, I don't know how to describe it, that this strike will cripple it even further? Um, no, I mean, Leanne, so strikes are always the last point of call. 
In fact, over the years, the number of strikes have actually decreased significantly. And we've always pushed as COSATU to rather resolve issues at the workplace with employers and with workers. But what is the greater cost to the economy? Is it allowing corruption to continue to consume more than 10% of our budget every year? That's 150 billion rand. Is it to continue to allow corruption to collapse our state-owned enterprises and our municipalities? We think it's a greater cost to the economy for employers to continue retrenching workers. So a one-day wake-up call, a shot across the bows to, to government employees is a far less price to pay. But equally, it's part of democracy. It's critical to give workers a platform to express their frustrations, because if you suppress that, then you get into a very volatile and unwieldy situation. If government business want to address the, the, the economic concerns, then they should engage with workers in a meaningful way and find resolutions. Workers have been carrying this country on their shoulders. During this lockdown, the only form of stimulus into the economy was from workers' pockets. It was the Unemployment Insurance Fund, which has paid almost 50 billion rand to businesses and to workers to keep them afloat during this period. Um, it has been workers' pension funds and investment funds which have really grown this economy and to which politicians are looking left and right to tap into to assist in rebuilding the economy. So we've carried our burden. We're now asking government and business to equally play their part at long last. I mean, the strike is going to basically hit every sector of South Africa's life, whether we're talking about the health sector, the education, um, you're even calling on as a strike a private sector employees to stay at home in sympathy with what is going on. I mean, this in your expectations, could this be one of the biggest strikes that the country's ever seen? We, we think so. Man. And look, I mean, there's been concern for members and workers about um, getting infected to COVID-19. So we've looked at very creative ways to register our protests. And number one is for workers simply to stay away from work, to withhold their labor. That's what a strike is in essence. But we were organizing motorcades, lunchtime pickets, protests um, across the country, not just in the capitals of Pretoria and Union Buildings or Cape Town of Parliament, but in all provincial cities and all provincial towns. There'll be motorcades across the country. So we're really hoping to create a very positive vibe where it's very clear the message from workers to govern and business is that they are tired and enough is enough. Um, and we've been quite chuffed with the support we've really received. And as you said, it's a unifying moment that all trade unions have now expressed the support to COSATA's call. And we hope, against all hopes, that government and the politicians and employers will finally listen to the frustration of workers. You know, Kasatu has said also that the strike is a protest against the abandonment of the working class by policymakers and decision makers. It's hard, however, to understand this because how is Kasatu left behind from decisions when you are not only represented in NEDLAC with other stakeholders, including the Minister of Labour, you're also part of a tripartite alliance? Sure. I mean, look, we have fantastic discussions, Leanne. We agree on most issues at NEDLAC in the alliance and so forth. We had a very progressive presidential job summit two years ago. But what we saw immediately afterwards was that both government and employers, by and large, ran away from honoring their commitments. We had to intervene last year <clears throat> with the president to convene monthly meetings in NEDLAC just to harass, to cajole business and employers and government to honor their agreements. <clears throat> so look, for us, we know that there's no more value in trust. We have to hold fire against the government employers to honor their commitments. But yes, we can say workers have been thrown under the bus. <clears throat> Otherwise, why do we have thousands of workers being retrenched every week? Why do we have 2.2 million workers being retrenched? <clears throat> the big four banks, the CEOs of the big four banks, all earn 150,000 rand every single day of the year. The average salary of a bank cashier is about 300 rand. Yet the big four banks all retrenched thousands of workers in the last few years. So really it shows a lack of patriotic commitment by many of our colleagues in government business. Government itself is a culprit. It has reneged on a legally binding wage agreement, which is one of the lowest wage agreements in the past decade with public servants. It has abandoned it. It has pled poverty so there's no more money to pay public servants. Yet this is the very same government which has shown a blind eye to deal with corruption, which has allowed 150 billion rand to be stolen from the fiscus every year to be wasted. So yes, we think workers had been thrown under the bus by government and by, by employers. But again, we can't simply sit and follow arms. It's up to us as COSATU, as other unions, to put pressure on them to get the act together. 
I know I, 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 we, we were about to move into news time, but there are, there are so many issues at play here and so many things that are on the minds of workers, whether we're talking to gender-based violence, we haven't even touched on that because I know that that is also at the heart of what is going to be uh, in the protest today being spoken about. Also, the lack of staff that are happening both in hospitals that are happening at different schools around the country and many other service providers. Also, the fraudulent terrorist claims. The, the list is endless what today is really going to be representing. But if you can give South Africans just a little bit of advice at a time like this, obviously, you know a bit more. We're going to be crossing to reporters around the country Sometimes you see these protests turn violent. What have you said to your members? Will there be obviously warnings given to your members and other members of unions that if people do want to go to work and participate in the economy freely, they're able to do so. But sometimes we see them not going that way. Look, uh, Leon, the, the law is a law. The law applies to everybody, no matter what your T-shirt is, no matter what your position in society is. So the police have an obligation and a duty to enforce the law. So if anybody breaks a law, the police are, are employed to, to arrest that person. And to get permission to organize marches and pickets, you have to go through a very rigorous process with the police, with the traffic police, etc. They require you to deploy marshals according to how many persons you expect. So we've got that in place. Our marches have always been peaceful, etc. There often are hooligan elements who come from outside who seek to, to take advantage. We know we're often a, a violent um, society with a, with a significant criminal element in it. We will work to make sure that doesn't happen. We're confident it won't happen. And look, our members are mothers and fathers. They're nurses and teachers. They're police officers. They're prison wardens. They're clothing workers. They're farm workers. These are upstanding members of society, people with great integrity, people who are willing to sacrifice a day's work to show their frustration at the lawlessness in the state and the corruption in society. So it's not going to come from our members. Our members will be very committed to reassure members of the public that they are safe. They're welcome to join. They're welcome to come with their spouses, with their children. It's going to be a positive vibe. And we've seen it, Leanne, previously when he marched to parliament against the former president calling for his resignation. When he marched against corruption previously or privatization, our march has always been peaceful. But again, we'll be working with the police to make sure that there are no disruptions, there are no incidences, and we're confident none will take place. Thanks so much for talking to us. Matthew Iskasachi's parliamentary coordinator discussing the massive strike action nationwide by the country's Ford Trade Union Federations that are starting today. All right, seven o'clock.